Hello and welcome to the Amory Speaks podcast. This is episode number five in my season two video podcast offerings, which are happening uh, mostly on YouTube and BitChute um, in the interim here, <laughs> September 26, 2025. I am keeping it going on the brainstorming sessions, working my way through uh, one of my favorite prayers and writings and metaphysical teaching uh, by a wonderful man, Walter Russell. Uh, I'm not going to get too carried away here at the beginning, praising and talking about him in the prayer um, and what it's done for me, because I seem to get into that in all the episodes somewhere. So... Um, I think if you're new, welcome, thank you for listening. You can certainly uh, just drop right in. We're in sort of the beginning sections, um, and this is the third part of the prayer in, in the, my podcast breakdown. So if you are interested, you know, you could certainly hop back and listen uh, to parts one and two. I'll have the links in the description or in the comments, if it's the shoot, maybe, uh, when I can get around to it over there. Uh, but you can certainly find them right on my channel on your own anyways. I mean, not that you need, it's convenient and nice to do that, right? And I do offer a lot of times assistance in finding uh, my content or other content and references and resources. Um, but also, I'm starting to learn that that's probably not the best practice, uh, just because others should really take initiative in their own space and time to do the physical work, to find the answers for themselves. You know, it's kind of like elementary school arithmetic and math. Uh, you need to show your work and do your own work. It's not just about copying the answer from somebody else and having the right answer, right? It's about actually knowing about the practical points of the exercise and of the equation or whatever, uh, you know, to solving it, to think for yourself. So, uh, so yes, if you're interested, it's out there and the other content is as well, but you can certainly just listen along uh, to today's section. Um, where I am kicking off again, I sort of left uh, the last part off right at, at what I'm going to talk about, giving sort of a cliffhanger <laughs> uh, to these lines here, which are, I am favored of thee, my creator. I am of the inner mind. And those I had mentioned at the end as well, I have sort of come through over the last about two years into the, this new unfolding to adding in the word because. Um, I'm doing quite a different things here and there with this prayer, adding in different words. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Every Sunday is a new and different. Uh, I kind of let it flow through as it's speaking to me that day. And if you ever choose... Or if you do do practices of sort of mantra repetition or any sort of repetition uh, or repetitive habitual routine, to breathe life into each time by making it anew for yourself, by finding those tiny changes that uh, incorporate what's happening and what is in your being at that very moment for every moment is alive and new. And when we respect and honor that magic and the energy of that, uh, and also the power of choice, right? In that knowing that it is each moment you can choose to action, you can choose to do. You could uh, make an, and set forth on any new quest or any goal, dream, project, or decision that is dawning on you that day or in that moment. Uh, <laughs> this is the creator essence. This is the power of the man, I, or, or maybe one of them. But for me, it's, it's a great power of ours. 
it's uh, common, obvious, and uh, like a truth, <laughs> you know. Um, and it really, I can feel it here of this uh, phrase. And when I add in the because to it and say, I, I am favored of thee, my creator, because I am of the inner mind. That, to me, really signifies and lights up that uh, air runway, sort of, to my higher self, to moving upwards, to the positive alignment of seeking my truth, what's right for me, you know, my sun, my great meaning and purpose. You know, whether I'm following a rising or setting sun, there's many different walks and, and purposes in, in each life, right? And the metaphors are relevant at different times, but they're still the following of truth. They're following of that great calling within you that sings harmoniously with situations of the external at that time. It is in a flow with the overall current that is taking place. You know, it's in recognition of a greater whole happening. We see external world all around us, and it's clear it takes place there without us, for the most part, um, as there are other beings, and there are longer lives, and people pass away, and, um, you know, they, we get this great truth, this sense that there's a structure here, there's a bigger picture, and, and yet, somehow, there can still be a great distortion available, and, and, and justified, and people jump right on it, to say there is no creator, or there is no God, or to also choose to say there is a God creator, but to then invert that power into self-serving, into a negative alignment that creates a directionality of negativity that's forced and high, high, hierarchical, excuse me, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very pressurized, it's, there's a, only certain things are allowed and a certain, there's so much restriction. And, and that's a point because they need to funnel and uh, contain the 360 degree source energy uh, to use it and manipulate it into their own self-serving purpose. Um, and now <laughs> I'm getting into a bit of shadow and light talk. Um, but it's, impor it's important to me because it signifies the great choice at hand. And uh, what we are in fact saying and choosing when we align with the creator, the infinite creator, the father, the great logos, however we see it and feel it, not a plastered version of it out there or someone else's, but our own. And this prayer has really helped me and it's that word father even because, you know, there is DNA, there is lineage, heritage, uh, companionship in that word. You know, I'm going to do that word on, in the whole series on its own, so I don't want to get too wrapped up in that anyways now. Um, same thing with favored. I mentioned that in the last episode, but uh, just to say it again, I'm, I'm going to hop over favor for now. And um, talk about the creator in her mind quickly. I've talked so much about this. <laughs> One of my favorite topics to write and, and create around. <laughs> Uh, I'll probably link some older blogs and stuff on creator consciousness, on creating freedom, not tyrancy, you know, on, on our creative essence and power and how we choose to set free our creative projects and, and even other people in our creative relationships and our creative interactions and our diverse ways that we create scenarios and situations in our lives. How to be able to set those things free and allow those to be sovereign created reality bubbles all on their own that we can step into and be a part of if we choose to but we don't have to we don't have to take them with us afterwards or be held accountable for or with them after if we choose not to and um, you know it's all about the intention of what we have set that reality bubble up with is it positively aligned or negatively aligned when we walk away from it, is it going to be calling and needing our attention later or not? And, you know, I talk, that's, that has so much to do with the creator consciousness. Um, I, I could talk about it all day. I'm not going to because this prayer is long as is, and I was hoping not to have 
a million episodes on it. So I'll link all of the, the talks on that and some great other podcasts. Oh, they might be lost in transition. We'll see what I can find. Um, but to, to showcase that it's a choice and that each one of us has the choice to be of that inner mind on our own and that each of our own inner minds is a unique fractal place and space of God's discovery of unique sources, development of manyness. It's unique to you on purpose. It, can, it cannot be any other way for we are one finite piece within infinite discovery. Yes, we're a fractal and it's a repetition in our own right of discovery of, through cycles to develop more definition, more pixelation, more clarity in our fractal mosaic tile that we've been given to develop for our life. But that sits within the great picture of God's source, right? The inner mind knows that. And when we, when we choose to be a part of that, we remember not only our own infinite peace, but everyone else's, and also that it creates a whole image here that only God's source is available to witness or is that image. However, it sits with you. I really love these next lines as well because this goes into it. This is what I feel like I'm explaining to myself and reigniting and remembering as I'm saying these lines here. I am of the inner mind. I know the ecstasy and exaltation of genius. Those words, ecstasy and exaltation. Uh, to be exalted is such a strange word. It's such an old-timey, yet also used a lot in astrology. And I, it pinged, the first time I heard this prayer, it was one of those metaphysical pings for me because um, I have a lot of different reference points in many different categories and I like to see the truth that courses through very seemingly disconnected, unrelated fields. <laughs> I love those kind of parallel metaphors and, and bringing them in from fields that feel like they don't even look the same. Um, or they're meant to be separated. You know, science, science people have really spent their life to separate them for some kind of purpose, but I just don't see them as separate. <laughs> uh, and that word exalted is one of those. And exaltation is, uh, it's such a sovereign, fiery, actionary word, right? It, it has such to do with that, what I've just been describing about the power of genius, of creation. Every one of us is a genius. You know, they have their own silly little parameters and their checkboxes of what they've chosen to define in their worlds as uh, whatever scopes and spectrums. But, uh, and, and, and while that could be meaningful and we can use some of them and learn them and you can case study yourself against it, those things can be helpful for self-development, but it all depends on how you choose to critique and take in that information and how it's reflected into the inner world, the inner mind. If you're not taking it through a clear lens, your lens of the observer is foggy and cloudy, uh, you're gonna get major distortions in it, you know? That can happen in infinite varieties, as, as we see. Um, but it's important to remember, you know, uh, the power of positivity and the power of uh, transmutation and alchemy change and moving through of the learning process of it all and that things are meant to flux and flow and ebb and flow uh, great cycles and changes and that there is an all loving unforgiving support mechanism and overall directionality and alignment of greater good happening here uh, now on all spectrums and levels because it's set and defined by infinite intelligence um, and that's where really like those feelings, the ecstasy and exaltation can really be used uh, for great momentum of positive systems. And it can create such eternal, ever flowing energies that are just every day wake up and ready to go. Uh, and that's where we get into this sort of all power is mine. 
right? And at first it was like, oh, it can seem almost very third ray, very egotistical here. And, and this is the gravity of the teachings as well that, we, that I have gotten into uh, over the last couple of years, over coming back to this prayer so many times and doing my own energy alchemy through it and just my own growth and wisdom points being accumulated over the years and, and intric intricately uh, seeding and blossoming in different ways and different seasons uh, have brought me to really developing a different sense of what's being said here and what I am saying. You know, who knows what's being what was said by Walter Russell and who knows what others say when they hear this. Um, and what I have sort of moved through saying while I'm saying this, but for now. <laughs> and what I have kind of felt is finally almost like sometimes these distortion words and sometimes these sort of you know, bumpy phrases, all power is mine, seems very rough. And then it's like sandpapering over it for a while. And you come to, or, or say a stone, you know, if you're tumbling stones, it comes to a point where the smoothness is recognizable, you know? It's, it's shifted from uh, being rough to being smooth. And the sensation and the pleasurability <laughs> of that is unique to itself. But it is likened to this uh, kind of working to me <laughs> in, um, in a sense of how my mind's incorporating the words and how my spirit and body sense them and how we're learning to say them differently and hearing differentness inside of them. Because now, you know, when I'm saying this, all power is mine, it's like, well, of course it is, because source infinite intelligence, the positive system, positive growth, seeking truth in itself is a power. It is an ignition and a going. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's the power that's mine. Before, it seemed a little tyrannical, like we're almost put in the sense of thinking that power is limited. And so when we say all the power is mine, we are saying all the power is mine, right? But it, there is no article here to power because power is infinite source from God, from the great logos, from the sun. No matter how many times someone stands underneath that sun and says, all oh, the sun's power is mine, is that sun going to really directly only shine out on them? And God forbid it ever did, right? Because what, even based on silly scientists, penguins in their suits, they say, we can hearken to their explanations for a minute, it, you know, it would burn you to death. The power of the sun is very powerful. It's spread across the spectrum of the universe of infinite intelligence for a reason. Um, directions and light coded, information coded on the light, right? Uh, instructions of organic rightness and that your path to growth forward towards it is unique to you and you receive the directions that are right for you in your right way. And each organic being does that growth. And so when we say all power is mine, you're saying all that power that is to be given from source to you that is right for you is of you and is for you. And that's much different because remember we're supposed to, we, we're taking care of ourselves here. We are organic beings. We're in this organic mechanism of, you know, mind, body, spirit, vessel. Um, and there's layers of physicality here. And when we set this restrictive limitations on our metaphysical beings and can't even say the phrase, all power is mine, without having this kind of mind-controlled limitation set on us from the get-go that power is limited and so I must monitor that and actually I can't say that 
uh, that is echoed into the universe within you. That's a very dangerous inner vortex system to be running, um, to be monitoring your external torito in that way, because it creates inward stress, um, undue stress on the inner vortex. And if you're trying to seek truth while doing that, um, there's a push and a pull that you're constantly graded against that's going to be causing stress on the body. And you're in a state of disease, no matter how healthy or harmonious you attempt to seek and do physical alignments or other spiritual practices. Uh, this, is, this is an inner core root malalignment that will continue to, you're continuing to hold for yourself. Um, sort of like having like maybe a t tightness in the, s in the belly too much when I'm thinking of uh, starting dance or gymnastics or yoga even and they tell you about tightening the inner core and um, having that inner, the shishunda, the inner energy that keeps you upright and how you could tap into uh, say like the nadis or um, even just in say in gymnastics, they would say suck your stump, suck in your belly, basically, just suck it in, uh, tighten your stomach. And that is kind of the more negative alignment of it, you know, because it's that created a permanent stress to be held there, like the physicalness of it is, uh, in, it's a very highly distorted inverted reflection of what the true energy is asking and what the actual uh, connectivity to that inner channel really is, the turning on of that, the recognition of those inner core muscles. And they're actually held by more of a sub or unconscious level of mus musculature and of your bone and of whatever's in there. And when you are in this constant state of holding tightness you can't really relax and it gets exhausting after a while you know um, and it creates stress in the rest of the body and it's undue stress because in fact if you tapped into that rightness of the inner core it doesn't even have to do with those actual abdominal muscles outside in the front there's no tightening really of that um, or like a gentle tightening happens, but it's totally, um, you can relax it into it. And that uh, rightness of alignment of how the body should be working keeps everything flowing smoothly. You know, it keeps you and your physical body from having problems with your back or having problems with your uh, abdominal muscles or anything like that um, but it also frees up <laughs> the body's boss it frees up all those muscles from tightening in there and allows them to breathe allows things to relax it's that is a physical exercise and a physical metaphor um, of the playing out that sometimes we do with holding these sort of restrictive energetic exchanges in our spiritual mental bodies to where we are placing these undue tight restrictions on ourselves, uh, lack and abundance around what the whole picture is really all about, <laughs> about what the whole body of the whole universe is really about and for and how and where we fit into it and how we choose to interact with it and because we do shape and create all the responses um, in our direct vicinity and we completely have dominion over our inner universe and so when we can positively align with the phrase all power is mine and really know that we're not taking away from anything when we say that and in fact we're giving to the whole by saying that and when we can actually feel the truth in there and work at that sovereign rightness that comes with that, you'll break out of the tension that you're in feeling that and thinking it's incorrect. 
and it's just like you can break out of the tension that comes with tightening the stomach in a, in a whole position in yoga or whatever, or even standing upright because you feel like you have bad posture. You feel like you've got a belly that you want to suck in, you know? Um, <laughs> you want to look good in your clothes or whatever the case is. Like, uh, <laughs> the aligning with the truth and finding the true way to look good in your clothes is a much better way to go at that, right? <laughs> than to sit there tightening up yourself all the time. Um, that's not the correct way to do it. And if and when we start to loosen up our energetics, our perceptions and our vocabulary around exchanges of what is power and what is our power and what we're allowed to call power and really disengaging from the ne the stranglehold, the negative alignment has on that word. Power, I guess, will need to be probably a whole episode on its own, <laughs> right? And I've been talking about it for quite a while already, and we're at about a half an hour. Um, but I'm going to go with the rest of this little... Uh, theme because it's the same thing and it really is all about the same concept of owning the power within you and claiming that power and the different words and, f and phrases here that are shades of how that power displays itself and we interact with it really and how we are fractal sources of God and by owning that power we are charging that whole body of the knowing of Christ consciousness of the true body of God, of, of humanity's ascension, you know, of uh, all the bigger picture and bigger roles that we as individuals, individual cells as humans are a part of the gross body of humanity, right? Um, when we recognize and align positively with these phrases, our power, our systems of doing and our service to ourself and to the whole, to all of our inner universe, but that that inner universe is a grand reflection of the outer universe. By giving uh, homage, recognition, and responsibility and accountability to those partnerships and promises, uh, that's the truth of it. That's where we really ignite the power, step into it. That's where we really, I believe, is the truth of the, behind these words, and that's what I'm feeling charged as I say these words here. Right? I know the ecstasy and exaltation of genius. All power is mine. I know my omnipotence. I have all knowledge. I know my omniscience. To me, the universe is an open book. I need not learn. I know. And I'm going to leave it there and uh, perhaps pick it back up with some of the things in there in the next episode. But much like I left last episode with some rumination points and some homework, <laughs> per se, not to, you know, feel free to kick it and not do it either, you know, or say I've already know about this. I don't need that. Um, whatever it is. But these couple of words and this last, these phrases here, you know, all that I've just spoke about and the grand positive power of the organic matrix and tapping into that and understanding that there is this etheric infinite intelligence running and coursing through all structure and architecture here. There's a great purpose and that we are but likened to cells in that great body of God or of a creation, of a larger creation of God perhaps and that uh, it is made, watched over, and functions in alignment with overall positivity, unconditional love, and greater good for the whole. It cares for each cell, just as you care for your heart or your stomach or, or your child or your pet. Um, all these things around us that we love and care for of extensions of us or literal pieces of us, right? Um, remember that the whole of it is... Uh, based on instructions set from a place in there, and that these words like power is mine, and having 
you know, I know my omnipotence. And if you don't know much about omnipotence, go look up that word. It's a beautiful, I love a thesaurus. Check one out uh, and get some other vocabulary that fits for you that you can tap into when you hear that word. Same thing with omniscient. Check it out. And, and say to yourself, I have all knowledge. I need not learn. I know. To me, the universe is an open book. And if you need to find that book, if you don't understand what that means, if you think it means you have to read a bunch of books or, or whatever, it's, the book is inside you. It's in your heart center, in the library or vault. It might even be, if you, that freaks you out and you don't even like books or whatever, it might be un, stuffed in a cupboard in a back room somewhere, or under a rug. It could be under a floorboard even, long, long and forgotten. Uh, you have to do the seeking inside the inner mind in order to find that because that's a book you wrote or God wrote for you, your higher self, your angels, uh, in partnership with them, however you like to look at it. Uh, but that is a book that is written already. And so when you say, you know, I need not learn, to me the universe is an open book, know that that open book is already written and it's been written you've read it that's why you don't need to learn you've already learned it and all we're doing is remembering and tapping back into that deep connection and knowing and that's inside and you will be shown in your own unique way because it's only you who has that path single vein of back to God's source <laughs> uh, so Good luck in your quest and learning, and um, have, you know, or not, if anything, you know, have a beautiful day or evening, wherever in the world you are. Take it and leave it for the moments that you've heard it today. Let it seek and soak, soak in deeply and, and bloom later, perhaps. Uh, but thank you for your time and listening, and I hope you'll join me uh, for the next episode. Uh, see you next time.